Well, welcome. Does transfer group, anybody want to do an intro or should I just go ahead and start? Okay, perfect. You can start, Brandy. Okay. So um, thank you so much for joining us um, today. We are the Office of Undergraduate Research and um, we are going to take and have our presentation today primarily presented by our grad assistant, Brooke Ryder. And she is going to talk about how to's in finding and starting a research as undergraduate, primarily from her own experience. So I think that this is like a great way to um, see it. Are you seeing anything right now? We're seeing the, um, the door that Angela created. Well, that's fun, but let's see if we can <laughs> share something else. Now do we see? How to find, okay, how to, perfect. So Brooke, I will let you go ahead and go from here. Okay, um, well, hello all, and thank you so much for coming to our presentation on how to's on finding and starting research as an undergraduate. Um, this presentation is brought to you by us, or the staff at the Office of Undergraduate Research. My name is Brooke Ryder, and I am the graduate staff assistant. There is Erin Cohn, who is our program coordinator, and Brandy Wiegers, our OUR director. We will be recording this lecture so that these slides will be available to you after this event is over. And if anyone wants more information about what is being discussed today, you can visit our website at cw.edu slash undergrad research or contact us at the OUR at cw.edu. Next slide, please. So is research for you? Engaging in research scholarship or creative activities allows you to pursue your interests, learn something new, hone your problem solving skills and challenge yourself in new ways. And the best part about it is that anybody can do it. Every field of study has its own methods of asking questions and finding answers to those questions. As a student engaged in research scholarship or creative activities, you seek answers to questions of interest specifically to you. So what is it like to work on your own project? The research scholarship or creative experience varies greatly. You might work alone or in a large team, but you can conduct your work in a library, museum, laboratory, a concert hall, an art gallery, or a community. However, the majority of your research scholarship and creative projects take several quarters to develop and complete. Um, how do you get started on a project? Well, you should take a class in a topic area that interests you. You should talk to faculty both inside and outside the classroom and ask your faculty questions about their own scholarship, which is a great way to start the conversation. Uh, you can also attend the Symposium of University Research and Creative Expression source in May to also find out what other types of projects uh, that students are conducting. Uh, this event will be held by the OUR and will be held virtually this year, and we will get to that later in this presentation. So what can you do after you get started on your project? Your faculty mentor will help guide you as you develop a project. You may want to consider applying for an undergraduate research grant that's funded by us for funds, supplies, equipment, or travel that you will need to complete your work. You should plan on presenting your work at professional meetings, conferences, or venues and apply for an undergraduate travel grant to help fund yourself during these processes. So how should you get started on your research? You should start by talking to people that include faculty whose classes interest you, students who are involved in research, and you can also talk to us at the Office of Undergraduate Research. Faculty do more than just teach classes. They also engage in scholarship in their own fields of study. They likely already have students helping them on their own projects and are helping develop other student ideas. Each discipline varies in regard to the roles that their students serve, but you will never know what those opportunities are unless you talk with your faculty. So how is important is it to find a mentor? Faculty provide essential guidance on all aspects of student projects. Your faculty does not have to be in your department, but should be familiar with your field of interest. So how can you find a mentor who suits your interests? Finding a mentor that suits your interests can be a difficult task. 
Our best advice is to visit departmental websites and talk to other students or faculty within that department. To get the clearest idea of the scholarship that a faculty mentor engages in, you can browse their publications and learn how to access and read journal articles. You can also talk to your own professors and other students and find out what is going on in terms of their own research. So how should you approach faculty who you'd want to work with? Once you have found faculty you are interested in working with, send them a personalized email describing your objectives and interests or approach them during their office hours. If a faculty mentor doesn't respond to your emails, try to meet with them in person or suggested virtually during their office hours to discuss your own interests. Although emails can be a great way to start a conversation with a faculty member, emails may not be the best way of reaching all faculty. So keep in mind that some faculty may not want to consider mentoring you until you have already been a student in one of their classes. Uh, so here are just some potential research opportunities available to you. They are discipline specific opportunities, ongoing student opportunities, and student opportunities with groups outside of Central. And this is just a screenshot of what is on the OUR's website. So if you'd like to know more about them, you can visit the link down at the bottom or just search cw.edu slash undergrad dash research slash students slash opportunities. So I was also a transfer student back in 2017, and I wish I would have known about all the opportunities that were available to me at that time. Um, some things that I wish I would have known about research as an undergraduate student were to figure out my research interests early on. This has helped me now as a graduate student because I knew what I wanted to research. So for every class I took when I began researching, I would focus on articles that relate to my own research interests and save those for future assignments. Another is when researching, always use validated and reliable sources. This includes websites, addresses ending in .gov, .edu, and sometimes .org, but I would be careful using that one. I have utilized personally the library's services to research validated journal articles and PubMed because my research interests are within the public health STEM field. If you are unsure about whether or not a website is reliable or validated, you can research the organization or the author's name that is presented within the article. And another is um, when you are researching for journal articles using the websites such as the library or PubMed, I would suggest adjusting your filters, such as the picture I included in this slide. And normally I would filter for peer reviewed journal articles, full text online, um, and the publication date. And if I can add one thing there, the library services has been really valuable to my students in providing support about that. So they do run trainings. Um, if um, you come back later on and want to take and find specific resources, um, they sometimes do trainings with classes, but they'll also work with you individually to take and, and do some of that, that sorting and filtering. They really can be helpful with that. I agree. And um, more tips that I wish I would have known as an undergrad student is to never be afraid to reach out to faculty or staff in your department or even other departments whose research interests match your own. They are always there to assist students and help develop your research ideas in any way possible. Um, if they are unable to work with you on your research, they can always serve as great guides and resources for you to create your own research ideas and assist you in looking for the correct mentor. And also, there are many resources on campus I wish I would have known about as an undergrad researcher. My colleagues can elaborate more about these services, but for one, the library is a great resource um, just for researching articles and books, and they have computers and print of printers available to students and other services that Brandy has mentioned. There is the Douglas Honors College that has the scholarship program called Solver, which one of my colleagues can elaborate more on where I can't. But um, I also listed McNair 
and the Wellness Center, which promotes positive, healthy behaviors and encourages social connections that support student success. They offer services for information regarding drugs and alcohol use, mental health, nutrition, recovery, sexual health, and violence prevention and response. And if you need, if you are in need of mental health services, the SMAC, now known as the Student Health Services and Counseling Services, is the medical clinic on campus that offers crisis services and counseling opportunities. And the OUR hosts uh, the SOURCE event each year. And this year's 2021 event will be held virtually with presentations that will be viewable online the week of May 16th to May 22nd. Student presenters should be aware that abstracts should be submitted online by Friday, April 9th at 5 p.m. And creative expression and research presentations need to be uploaded by Friday, April 30th at 5 p.m. Presentations can include posters, online oral presentations, creative expression and performance pieces, constructed and creative objects, and panels. Uh, for more information about the SOURCE event, you can also head to our website and locate the SOURCE tab on the left-hand corner of the page. We would also like to mention that the Office of Undergraduate Research supports undergraduate students through small grants for travel, research, and creative expression. All currently enrolled students at any CWU campus are eligible for these grants. Students who are funded through the OUR are required to present their work at source. So new for 2020 is our virtual presentation grant. Previously, the OUR has funded travel grants that were available to support undergraduate students to travel to conferences to present their work or to perform. For this current year, 2020 to 2021, these grants have been modified to fund students presenting at virtual presentation events. Individual students can request up to $300 and groups of two or more students can request up to $600. The deadline to submit grants to our office is October 21st at 5 p.m. and again in February at 5 p.m. We also give out grants to undergraduate students engaged in mentored projects to cover costs associated with research scholarship or creative activities. The College of the Sciences provides a portion of the funding for research grants that go to students working with faculty mentors on project within COTS. Individuals can request up to $750 and groups of two or more students can request up to $1,500. The deadline for this grant is the first Wednesday in November and again in February at 5 p.m. And if you would like more information about those grants, you can visit our webpage or shoot us an email. I, I apologize. Um, the deadline is actually October 21st for 2020 as well. For the so, second? Yeah, for the research and creative expression. Oh, okay. My apologies. So just like everything else, things have slightly adjusted with this new virtual year. So, um, so that, those two deadlines got modified to um, deal with our, our, our translated quarter. Um, similarly, for this new year, um, we have a, another opportunity for um, funding for students and faculty to support your undergraduate research efforts. So what we've provided you so far is sort of what Brooke's experience was on how to get started on research, how to move forward on research, and really good research practices. And what we're trying to tell you now is where you'll be able to present your research, and then also how you could get money to do this research project while you're here on campus. And so we have grants that up until now have been around, like we said, $750 or, or it was around um, more money to, to travel. But since we can't travel this year, Angela asked about that, we can't travel this year. So we're instead going to support everyone that's doing virtual conferences. Um, and then campus itself has a new program that they created this year specifically to try to allow everyone to get to do these research experiences. So it's up to $3,000 for you to take and work with a faculty member. And this could be a good motivation for you to take and start that relationship and ask a faculty member if they would be available to work with you. 
It's the first time we've offered this. Um, so I, I think we're still learning a lot about how it's gonna be run, but the deadline is at the end of the month. And then um, whoever does get funded will be asked to present at that source event that Brooke discussed. So it's just way more opportunities for you to take and expand your experience here at Central and have a chance to have this independent achievement that you've done while you're here as a student. Can I meet myself? Um, so that was what we had for you. Uh, we'd like to thank you guys for joining us today to discuss ideas on how to start and find your research. Remember, you, we are always here to support you guys, and so are your faculty and mentors. Again, you can reach out to us by email, or you can check our Facebook and Twitter pages for updates on grants and events that we are holding in the future. And then here is a link if any of you in attendance are prospective students. The link below the Wildcat will guide you to a short form that you can fill out to get connected to CW's admissions office for regular updates about becoming a Wildcat. And if you are a current student, you do not need to fill this page out. If you guys can see this, this is the agenda for the National Student Transfer Week, and I encourage you guys to join as many meetings as you can. There will be a lot of great information for you guys, so um, you guys can take a screenshot of this if you need to. Um, again, thank you guys for coming to our presentation, and I will open up the floor to any questions you all may have. I actually noticed um, Angela had a question in the chat. Uh, so is McNair's accepting applications now, and are we allowed to travel currently? So um, I will address those two questions. And the McNair program did just receive an extension grant. So they are still taking and funding students. McNair, McNair specifically is focused on supporting first generation students and their experience in um, both being in university for the first time, as well as preparing for graduate programs. So the McNair program specifically has the goal of supporting anyone that wants to take and go to graduate school. Um, they fund summer research experiences and you spend the year doing smaller projects that prepare you for that research experience over the summer. And um, that is something that they are currently um, accepting applications and it's something that you can find again, search, search Central and McNair and you will be able to find that program. In addition, the next question, we are not allowed to travel currently um, without lots and lots of paperwork. So um, currently that was why we're doing those virtual presentations. And I will say that I just did my very first virtual conference and um, for SACNIS, uh, let's see if I can do it all. The Society for the Advancement of Chicanos and Native American Scholars. And um, they actually have, one of the things that's really special about SACNIS is they want to take and have everyone that participates really get to bring a part of their their cultural expression. So there was bands that performed virtually from garages all across the country at the start intro ceremony. So um, I think that people are putting a lot of energy into trying to do this well, and um, it was exciting to take. Um, there was a, a Native American blessing um, again done virtually. So I think. We want to make sure that just because we're in a virtual world, you still have the opportunity to have that collaboration, that community that you would get by going to a professional conference. So these are opportunities um, for you to take and hear from the top scholars in your field. And we want to make sure that you have a chance to take and present the independent work that you've done and contribute to that knowledge. Um, how do we find those conferences and where do we start looking? Um, I'm going to take a stab at that and then I want to throw it back at, at Brooke. Um, in regards to conferences, um, oftentimes these are going to be discipline specific events where people take and share their, their knowledge. Um, I'm a mathematician, so the way that that ends up looking is there's several different types. Sometimes we have regional conferences specific for undergraduates, and so oftentimes those get shared 
by our math club and by math faculty taking and letting um, students know about those particular events. We also have national undergraduate conferences. And again, that gets shared by sort of the same faculty. Um, specifically, we have the Nebraska Conference for Undergraduate Women in Mathematics. And so that's one that I send out every single year and let students know about. Um, and, and I'm sure each discipline is going to have something similar. We also then have broad national events for all mathematicians. Those happen twice a year. And um, you go to the talk and there was literally 4,000 people all talking about math in one room for about five days straight. That's, it's all math all the time. And so you look at this giant schedule and you say, oh, I think I'm gonna go over here and then you go over there and then you go over here and you spend the whole entire time having chances to hear from people that wrote the books that you're reading, right? Do you have a chance to take and actually see these mathematicians? One of the things I really like about the SACNIS conference specifically, that's one of those big generalized conference for five days of presentations, is that for some of my students, it's the first time that they've seen a mathematician that identifies similar to them, whether it's culturally, gender-wise, racially, I mean, it's just a chance for them to finally see that we have a much broader diversity of mathematicians and scientists across this country. And I think it's important to celebrate that. Finally, there's going to be really large national conferences really focused on one mathematical topic. And usually you don't go to those until you're a graduate student because they don't even take and talk about, like, they don't even assume that you, like, need an intro about, they just start talking at you and just, Whoa! so, so hopefully we'll save on that until graduate school. So that's all of these other ones. And we try to give you that experience in our small one week event that we do here on campus called Source. That's where you have a chance to take and hear from students all across our university about all the different types of math that's not math. Okay, well, math. All the different types of cool work and creative expression and research that our students are doing here on campus. Um, normally, it's a two day event, meaning that students are just presenting solid for those two days. What we're doing now virtually is um, trying to extend it, and people will be able to see the same videos for the whole entire week. And then hopefully we're going to have once a day a small sort of synchronous event where everyone will be able to log in and we'll get to hear somebody present, maybe have like a, an art show or have a fashion show or something like that. So it's a chance to take and see what is the cool independent work that individual undergraduates and graduate students are doing across our campus that's contributing to our knowledge about all the cool things in this world. So that was my summary. Brooke, what do you think? What did I miss? Um, you basically got all of it. I would also say for students like me, um, it is difficult to find conferences, especially in my area. There aren't many that um, allow students to attend. We In the public health field, we have about two that I can think of right now. But um, if you're looking for conferences, I would say your best bet would be to ask your faculty and your mentors that also go to these events, um, they would also have a good idea of what events you can present at and what events will allow you to just attend and watch, which has been very helpful to um, progress my research, just listening to other professionals in my area discuss um, mental health, which is my, my research interest. Um, I can kind of elaborate on Megan's question, what does source look and feel like um, to elaborate off of Brandy as well. Uh, last year, it was the first time we've done it virtually. And I thought it was more beneficial, although you don't get that in person experience and interacting with the authors one on one. I was able to attend more um, presentations in different areas and fields that I wouldn't have been able to attend to if they were held at the same time during a 24 hour span and it's not even 24 hours. But um, last year virtually it was, um, we 
provided a website for anybody to join in on and you can look at different disciplines and they the SOC the student opportunity center that we collaborate with provided you with the disciplines who was presenting at what time and actually it wasn't even at a specific time it was just open all week so you could attend any presentation you wanted to uh, you can I believe this year we're trying to make it so that you can interact with the author and have an open discussion with them and I would highly recommend attending source just to watch other students presentations even if you aren't presenting um, you just gain so much knowledge from what other students and faculty are doing and I think it was a really eye-opening experience for what students and faculty have done to just um, better their own research areas and inform the public and our community. I, I would share that several of my students in the past have really appreciated going to source when they knew that they wanted to do research the next year because they had a chance to see what this year's students are doing and um, Angela just shared in the chat that she attended source her first year at Central and to see the students that were presenting and it really helped her when it was time to present. Something that I also really like to share with my students is that um, presenting and at, at source is a great thing to talk at a future future job interview um, to say that you were able to take and explain um, your particular topic to a diverse audience of, of different people, other students, um, and um, really be able to take and have to address questions even from people that aren't in your discipline. I think it's a good skill to be able to share at a future job interview. Um, you can also share that the University 101, she has University 101 students go and be a fly on the wall the first year. So they're much more comfortable in future years getting more involved. So we encourage you to just try it out this year. Um, I saw two more questions. I'm gonna do Scott's questions first. And um, so the last $3,000 joint research grant, which I believe is this one, does it need to be presented off campus or is there funding to support the research? Um, so as we understand it, it's primarily to support research. I'm gonna change the share here and we'll see but um, I have updated it as a link. It's the very top link in our, our undergraduate research page. And we are in the process of sending a set of questions to the provost about it. And as those questions get updated, we will post them here. So um, I believe that there does have to be some sort of independent project student research component. Um, and given that this is the first time that they've offered it, I'm sure they're going to broadly define that research, but I would want to really focus since research is in the title of the grant that I would, as you were writing your application, even if um, you view it as more of a creative project, I would take more of a research slant in how you write about proposing your idea. Does that address your question, Scott? Okay. So, but since it is the first year, we aren't certain of the details. Um, we were told about it after it was after it was put together. Um, then Angela had asked if about graduate camp. Um, this was an event that we did for students this year, um, as part under the OUR um, umbrella. So, um, and it's a plan that we have definitely for future summers. It's a, a program that we run to support students that are in the process of applying for graduate um, graduate school. We meet, um, um, we meet um, every other week for all of summer. And um, let's we'll see if I can get there fast. I don't know if I can. Um, we, we just take and try to support you in, um, applying for let's let's there we go um graduates creating applications for more professional experiences that's what graduate camp stands for um we do it did it virtually this summer and um you can actually if you weren't able to join us and you are graduating you would still have access to the notes from all of those meetings 
um, and just sort of a basic structure to help you take in and put together graduate applications um, and professional applications. I'm just trying to take in, hold yourself accountable for doing small steps towards taking and creating a professional application as you're preparing um, to leave Central. So it's something that we have done. Um, we plan to make that a regular summer event to support any students that are doing research over the summer. It would fit really well as a professional development component. Um, but Angela asked this good question about if we're gonna do something over winter break. And Angela, it's a great question and I will think about it and let you know. And if we do, we will announce it. Okay. Because as Angela said, a lot of applications are due in sort of January and February. So since we have that whole month this month, that makes a lot of sense. Is there any other ways that we can support you? Well, I'm going to actually ask my question out loud, um, Brandy. The, um, back when I applied to graduate school, which was a long time ago, <laughs> um, my grad graduate programs often ask for a writing sample. And I wonder if that is still the norm that it would be sort of a, a, a really smart idea to involve yourself in research and writing some sort of research paper or thesis um, if you're thinking about graduate school. But I also liked what you had to say about if even if you're going into industry, potentially being able to talk about research in a job interview. So I'm thinking about, you know, more on that question of why is this a valuable thing to do? Yes. Um we applied in different graduate programs, so I didn't have to take an, an, and submit a, a writing sample for, for math, um, but we did have to take and talk about your ability to problem solve and think um, as part of my graduate application. And so that was where showing that I had done individual research really showed that I had individually moved forward an idea. And that's really what your goal is in graduate school is instead of taking and using a set up curriculum that a faculty member gives you, you have a question and you guide it individually through the process. Um, Brooke is very familiar with this right now as she is in a, her master's program. Um, am, I, am I summarizing it? It hasn't changed that much, right? Since. Uh, for, well, for me, I did have to submit a writing sample um, and they just wanted to see kind of your strengths. Uh, you could elaborate on your weaknesses and Submitting a writing sample is also a good way to show your professors what you're interested in so they can also kind of if if they accept you into grad school, they can know which mentor to put you with that can help evolve your research ideas and they, it can also show them like what are my students. Um, disadvantages and like where can we work on those while they're in grad school. And I think uh, just writing samples are a good way to um, show your potential uh, graduate schools that, you know, here is what I excel in. Yes, I have um, some disadvantages within my paper. Uh, I don't know how to do X, Y, or Z, but I, I am a good student. I work hard and I can show you that you know, anything can be accomplished if you set your mind to it kind of deal. But I, it does depend on the, um, the graduate course you're applying to because Brandy mentioned that she did not have to submit um, a writing sample, but they are very, very useful to have. Maybe, I mean, I have to do essays. Is this what we mean by writing sample or are they different? Yeah, mine was a mine was an essay. Okay. okay. So it, was, actually, it was past. Oh, I'm sorry. What? So mine was for a PhD program in political science, and and I submitted a 30 page research paper. You are awesome. <laughs> we we did not have to do that. We did have to take the subject exam. So so we have to do. Um, there's two levels of graduate research exam, and so we had to do the. Anyways, um. So, and that's part of what we talk about over the summer is, is sort of like how each one of us have individual requirements, but something that Brooke talked about is sort of what the strengths are that we bring and, and places that we still need to develop as, as students and as, as scientists. And, um, 
and and scholars. And so something that we spent a lot of time over the summer working on is how do you share those experiences that you've had that have been really defining to who you've become as a scholar that perhaps would have been really negatively seen at first. So if you've had times of hard grades or if you've had times that you had to leave school and come back, we can think about how you take and, and build upon those within your essays because that's, I think for myself at least, that's the first thing I want to tell you all the negative things that I've, that I've done, but, but we want schools to sort of see your strengths and so we use the time over the summer to support that. And so going back to Megan's, Megan's original question in regards to why you'd want to do undergraduate research is it shows a much more human part of you beyond the classroom. Right, it shows what you individually can contribute to our knowledge and, and it shows that you understand that grad school is not just going to be harder and harder versions of the classes that you're taking right now. It shows that you've had that chance to experience that a little bit. And that's scary. It's really different than maybe what you've, what you've done so far. And that's why I'm so glad that you've come to Central because we have these amazing faculty members that I think do this really well and are really excited to take and work with you to take and, and work on having an individual experience. Um, that's evidenced by we have so many people presenting at Source, so many people applying for these things is because we have people, faculty members, graduate students that really wanna support our undergrads and having these really amazing experiences. So, and as Angela says, we don't have to do them by ourselves. You can also do them as a, as a group project. Um, and that's, I think also really fun. So yes, people can definitely still do group projects as part of Source. So Brandy, I wanted to pop in and say that I have loved not only the, the grad camps in the summer, but the presentation for Source. And I was talking to, a friend of mine at another university and I was talking, we were talking about grad school and preparing and she was just going over the list of schools, the website she's looked at. And I was like, well, I've been going to this grad camp and I'm preparing um, my CV and I'm looking at this and I'm doing this. And then I did my first presentation at Source for undergraduate research. And she's like, why do you have to do undergrad research? And I was like, what? And it was just a so different world that she didn't have all these opportunities that Central's provided for me. So I just want to say thank you because it's really nice getting really set up for grad school. Thank you so much for sharing that, Angela. Yay. I do think Central, had, like the faculty is really, I think it's part of the reason I came here and it's a lot of the students came here is because those faculty give, give of that, so. In fact, let's see this, I think, I don't know if you saw the same pictures when we were going through, but I was, this is my student the day that we presented our first, we submitted our first paper. So it was also like a week and a half before COVID. So we were also happy. It was, it was early 2020. <laughs> it's a different world. <laughs> so. Any other questions, any other ways we can support you in learning about our program? So um, thank you then for, for coming and letting us share so much. Um, I especially thank Brooke for sharing so much about her individual experience here. Um, I mean, did your undergraduate research experience here at Central lead you to want to do your master's program? Absolutely. Um, I wasn't even considering going to grad school. And because I was a transfer student, I knew no students, no professors, uh, had like two friends, which are great. I don't need more than more than a handful, but um, just getting so close to my faculty, my mentors and the people in my department, it really um, opened my eyes into all the possibilities there are to going to grad school. And, you know, it's, it hasn't been easy, I'll say that and anybody can attest to that, but um, it's been really rewarding. And I do truly believe um, I'm only here because of the great faculty and mentors I've had at Central. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's great. 
Was there anything else we can support? Nathan, Scott, Nate, Scott? Okay. Well then, um, I just end with reminding you that we are here. Um, our program, we will keep posting to our um, website. We do also email faculty, staff, and, and students whenever there's going to be um, big events. So um, make sure you're checking your email. Um, it's not, yeah, that's also a really useful skill as you transfer here to Central. So thank you so much. And there is once again, Please remember if you are a student that is considering coming to Central to go ahead and fill out the, the form so that we can follow up with you. And I put that in the chat. Thank you very much. Can I stop recording? Can I stop?